Hallelujah, church. We are excited to be here today. Amen. In the presence of the Lord, we are going in live and doing speaker. Amen. And just keeping warm and giving Jesus Christ all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Amen. You know, I really wanted to come in. I wanted to do a live, but you know what? I know that I have to do teachings as well that we have to come on in and be a part of the YouTube viewers. Amen. And so I have to do a lot of different extensions, amen, um, to kind of get the ball rolling. Um, and I can probably see, let me see if I can go ahead and come on in. I want to share this. Um, once again, we are doing live speaker here today, amen. And I'm just sharing you guys with all of this because um, I believe this word that I have here today, it is is going to bring deliverance in your life. Amen. And you're saying, how can you say that, Sister Tina? Well, you know, so many people live under the law. Amen. So many people live under the law. And it brings you to a point to where you want to... Um, always have a critical... And a judgmental spirit. Amen. And and I'm saying that really with all reference of, of just really with where we're at right now. And, um, you know, and just being careful uh, what you're doing and even what you're not doing. Amen. And a lot of that is going to happen in your knowing. Amen. In your knowing. And um, this word of God is profound. Amen. Because once again, I know that it's going to set the captive free. And so I'm going to make it in here into our live Cruzando Fronteras con una voz alerta. Because I've been sharing with um, all those on my ministry page that I will be doing more alive as well amen and so you know this weather hasn't it's been beautiful uh but we have been getting a lot of rain and so forth and so i might have to go ahead and go in on tina viesca just because it's allowing me to do so more than anything else um so i'm going to see if i can get the connection here so that way we can go ahead and pray and get as well as get get into the word of God amen so please forgive me um I was thinking about doing it right when I wanted to start it amen and so we're gonna go ahead and start a live videoing amen and once again we are um recording this amen but I do want to share it along the platform of all of those that are connecting with us in our groups. Amen. And so as it's loading up, amen, we are live in speaker. Amen. And we're going to go ahead and go on in so that we can pray. Amen. Hallelujah. So let us pray. Father God, let thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you, Lord, that we are able to access your kingdom, Father God. And that you move mightily over and in our lives, Father God, in leaps and bounds. That even which we may not understand completely, Father God, you will make it known. You will bring that fresh revelation to our lives. Father God, that many of your children, even here today, would not live under guilt and shame, amen, but that we will live under the grace of God, amen. And we thank you, Lord, that where sin abounds, that grace is much more greater. And Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, Father, use my mouth, my lips, my tongue, Father God, let me have a tongue of a ready writer, Lord. Let me speak that word of deliverance to many people, amen, that need to receive 
here today, Father. We thank you, Lord, that um, who the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. And we receive you here today within our lives with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. There's thanksgiving within our hearts. Father God, we bless your holy name. We thank you, Lord, and we praise your holy name. So I'm going to go ahead and try to go one more time before um, before we move on. Amen. Sometimes uh, the equipment is a little slow, and we are having a rainy day here in Fort Worth. Amen. And so our connection, I, will, I believe, okay, it's saying it can't to get back. And so, okay, we're going to go ahead and move on forward. Amen. Um, I thought maybe I can go into another channel. Because that's really what, you know, I love to do. Is to work and to do the work of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can somebody say thank you, Jesus? Hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So we're going to see if we can get this established here today. Amen. Hallelujah. We are open. We are open. We are open. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, and to the things of Christ. Hallelujah. Well, Hallelujah. Let us move forward. Amen. One of the things that I wanted to share with you today. Amen. It's out of the book of Romans. I will be reading there in chapter 4. And what brought me along this road. Amen. Is that we have to know our faith and we have to know what we believe. Our belief and our faith will ever be increasing. It will ever be growing. Amen. Because there's much there that has to be revealed and sounded, amen, by the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. If these things are not done so through the word of God and knowing what you believe and knowing the faith that you are standing on, then a lot of the work, amen, that um, I don't want to say that it, it can be futile, amen, because every work that we do in the kingdom of God Amen. As the Lord leads you, it can be productive. Amen. You could do a good work, but it's a God work. Amen. And I just said a word there. It can be a good work or it can be a God work. Amen. And so the example of the life of Abraham there in chapter four, and I'm just going to be touching on various areas because it's from Romans chapter four and five and get into the study. Amen. Uh, God just opened up. Amen. And just revealed to me his glory through the word of God. But Abraham believed God and God accepted Abraham's faith. And that faith, that faith that Abraham had made him right with God. And so we are going to think things, amen, in our own mind that will make us right. Because in our own mind, we are right, amen. In our own mind, we are right. And so God breathes on that because now you have unctioned that belief with the faith, amen. You know, there's a scripture reference that talks about that when the Lord returns, that will he find faith in the land. Amen. And so we could take all of these different references and say, what is it that God is leading us to believe? See, first and foremost, we must ultimately believe in the word of God. Amen. Now, just as well as we have the Old Testament, we also have the New Testament. We can't just live in the Old Testament, come on now, and throw away the New Testament. The New Testament is for the New Testament, the new way of living 
and life according to the word of God, according to the promises of Jesus. Now, Jesus was in the not in the flesh in the Old Testament, okay? But he came to be in the flesh in the New Testament, not in the Old Testament, but Jesus still existed. Amen. At the beginning of time, there was the Father, there was the Son, and there was the Holy Spirit that was hovering upon the earth. Amen. But as we read the different words of Scripture, the capital S, when it talks about the Spirit, is talking about Jesus. Amen. And in the angelic realm, in the words angel of the capital on angel, is also uh, symbolizing Christ, amen, in the Old Testament, amen. Now, we know in the Old Testament, God uses judge, God used uh, uh, kings, amen, and God as well used prophets. Some people believe, even here today, that prophets don't exist. No, we know that to be wrong, okay. And, um, and I really don't want to go there because that's a whole other teaching. But we know that the Lord left the five-fold ministry. Amen. And so this is very, very in-depth study. But I'm taking you to this because we must be free. Amen. We must be made right with God. And the way that we're going to be right with God is through our belief and through our faith. Amen. In what we believe in through this word of God. Now, God accepted Abraham's faith. And that faith made him right with God. When people work, their pay is not given as a gift. But as something earned. Amen. So if I'm working, I'm earning it. Are you, are you getting the picture? I'm earning it. So there's an earning mentality because I am working. Amen. But people cannot do any work that will make them right with God. That brought me back to the scriptural references, which I was trying to get that, uh, that scriptural references. Amen. Where it talks about where it says that, you know what, the work that we do. Amen. They're like filthy rags. Amen. In other words, I can't, uh, we call it, um, I heard a, a great pastor said it that this way, growing up, Pastor Frank Lopez, whom is my father, um, who joins us at the gathering. Amen. So praise be to glory to God. Hallelujah. What I'm saying, that join us at the work here. Amen. And that saying that we get into a, a doo-doo mentality, which is, I have to do so that God can bless me or that God can, of course, of course, now listen to me, it has to be all in obedience into Christ. We're doing it out of obedience as well as we need to be doing it out of the heart. Amen? Because it is out of God's perfect will for our lives that we believe and that we have faith. Amen. We believe and that we have faith. That's where we're doing a work. Amen. But it says, but people cannot do any work that will make them right with God. And so that's when we can get into the spirit of legalism. Okay. And we come into these rituals. Or into these traditions where, okay, if I don't do that at this time, at this hour, every day, you know, I have to be on my knees or I have to be on my face or I have to be lifted up my hands, you know, or I have to have on a certain music. I have to have, you know, no, that's, that's, uh, getting into the, the, the doo-doo religion. Amen. And that's really um, something that you should not be doing because that's the only way that you feel right. Amen. That's the only way that you feel right. And the Lord is saying, but people cannot do any right 
that will make them right, or any work that will make them right with God. So they must trust in Him. And see, everything that we do, God is saying, Can you trust me? Can you trust me? Can you trust me? Can you trust me? Can you trust me when I lead you to do this? Can you trust me when I lead you to do that? Can you trust me in what I've called you to do? Amen? It says, can you trust Him? Trust in Him who makes even evil people right in His sight. Amen? And you could probably say, well, go figure there. Amen? Because even those who are wrong... Amen. Even those who are wrong can be made right. Amen. Under the grace of God. Okay. And you're saying, that was a scratch on the head. I'm not sure about this, Sister Tina. But I'm going to take you there. Okay. I'm going to take you there. I'm, gonna, I'm walking this. Through this. I was trying not to make it long. But you know what? It's got to be precept upon precept. So that we can get an understanding of the word of God. I'm telling you, people are going to be set free today. It says, so they must trust in him who makes even the evil people right in his sight. When God accepts their faith, when God accepts their faith, and that makes them right with him, David said the same thing. He said that people are truly blessed, okay, blessed when God, without paying attention to the good deeds Make people right with himself. Okay, so it brought me back to the scripture where I broke down. You got to get the teaching. Amen. You got to get the teaching where I shared with you at a Psalms 32. Just the other day. Look it up. Look it up. It says that happy are the people whose sins are forgiven and who wrongs are pardoned. Happy is a person whom the Lord does not consider guilty amen so we have access through the precious blood of jesus that when we have sin that we can come before the throne of god and he's no longer looking at our sin when we truly have asked forgiveness and we're not in a repetitive of iniquities before the lord and even done so if you come before god with a clean heart asking him wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly, that Lord, forgive me of my sin. God will not see you and count you to be guilty. Now, that doesn't give us the right. We've heard it before. It doesn't give you the right to be sinning and to be sinning. Oh, I sinned. Okay, I'm going to ask for forgiveness. Oh, I sinned. I'm going to ask for No, this is not the, the as they say, the, the sloppy agape you know, the, the greasy gospel. No. This is about the blood of Jesus. Paying the price of all our sins. Even from the very beginning of time. Because and then Jesus would have to go to the cross every day of every hour of every second of every minute. That we're saying that the blood of Jesus cannot cover all of our sins. Are you listening to me, church? But that doesn't mean that we can live a life of a sinner. Amen. We're sinners saved by grace. So where's our belief and where's our faith in God? See, that's where even evil people, God said that he makes them to be right by our belief and by our faith. Amen. I'm trying to break it down. There's so much that God has promised. I'm telling you there's so much here. In this blessing. Only for those who are circumcised. Or also those who are not circumcised. We have already said that God accepted Abraham's faith. And that faith that made him right with God. In other words his faith made him whole and right before God. So how did this happen? And, and this is how the evil that is made right. How did this happen? He was not circumcised. God was only receiving those who were circumcised. Amen. Now pay attention. 
Did God accept Abraham before or after that he was circumcised? It was before his circumcision. And so in other words, he still needed circumcision. Amen. But Abraham was circumcised to show, to show that he was made right with God through the faith before he was circumcised. So in other words, because he was made right through faith in his belief, his actions then led him to be circumcised and then to be made right before the Lord. And so the blood of Jesus, come on now, covered for that time span that he was quote unquote under the law. He was under the law. But thank God that through the blood of Jesus covered him until it was done so. So the sin from this was covered. And all from the past sin up until the time of his action that led him to his circumcision, which was covered by the grace of God. I'm telling you, there are shouts of hallelujah that God is breaking. Amen. Sin, shame, and guilt here today. See, listen to me, church. He is the father of all believers who are accepted as being right with God. There it is again. Believing and our faith. And Abraham is also the father of those who've been circumcised and who live following the faith. In other words, following the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Are you a good teacher? Are you a prophet? Are you just the seeds of, of, of Abraham? No, he is the son of the living God. He's the son, amen, of, he's Jesus Christ, the king, the savior of the world, who is the redemption, amen, and that has brought us into this new life, this new kingdom, amen. I wrote it down this way, sin brings forth death. You choose the way of the law, okay? We broke every law that's been given, okay? Those are the commandments. We break them all through our mind, through our mouth, through things that we've had in our hearts. You know what? We haven't made it every realm, even to the acknowledgement, even of who Jesus is. Many may know God only as their Savior, okay? Many may know Him as Lordship. In other words, we've rendered, surrendered all of our life. There's nothing that belongs to me. All of my life belongs to the Lord. That's a surrendered life to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There's those that know Him as a healer. Amen. Because God healed their body. Literally raised them up from the dead. The state of a coma. The state of sicknesses, of diseases, of cancers and tumors. And God removed him and he saved you by his grace. We know him as our Jehovah Rapha. That is our healer. We know him as our redeemer. That has saved us through his saving grace. That lift me up out of the miry pit. Come on now. That broke the chains. Amen. A bondage of those that were in slavery and sin, Of those that were stuck in adultery. Of those that were stuck. Come on now. Of the lesbian spirit. Of those that have been stuck into that, um, that spirit. Now I just said lesbian spirit. Amen. 
I believe maybe someone is going to come, uh, come across this channel and that's going to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I receive it here today. Maybe you're struggling with that because I sense that right now of those that those gen, uh, genders of, I don't even know who I am. Just call me he, she. Come on now. I'm just, just saying, just saying. You know, Jesus has raised us from the dead. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to run this. I'm, I'm going to run this to you. Amen. Let me share this with you. Let me share this with you. It says, he was right with God by his faith. If people could receive what, what God promised by following the law, then faith is worthless. Did you hear me? This is the gospel. Then we would not need faith. Amen? If we could obtain everything by the law, in other words, if we could have obtained everything through Abraham, then why do we have Jesus? Amen? Why do we need the blood? Why do we need the Calvary? Then faith will be worthless. But God's promise to Abraham is worthless because the law can only bring God's anger. See? That's where God is a merciful God. In other words, you know what? Oh, God. You know what? I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. But give it, give it to me anyway. Give it to me anyway. You know what? Gra the grace of God is saying, I don't deserve it. But you know what, Lord? Please. I don't deserve it. But thank you. I thank you for it. I don't deserve it. But thank you, Lord, that you've given it to me. You know what? Mercy. I mean, there's judgment. Just give me what I deserve, Lord. Just give me. But have mercy on me. But just give me what I deserve. I, I don't deserve much. <laughs> I don't deserve much. And you can say, yeah, but your sister Tina. No, no. When we go before the Lord, we are standing before a holy God. And we've all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. But see, that's where the Lord says here that, you know what, where sin abound, okay, grace much more abounds. The grace of God increases. So you got to read this. you got to dissect the Word of God. Now, I just read there out of Romans 5. I'm still in 4. I'm still in 4. But we're wrapping it up. Because the law can only bring God's anger. But if there is no law, can only bring God's anger. But if there is no law, there is nothing to disobey. So there's some people that say, okay, I have the law. And so I'm always going to confront that. Because that's my disobedience. That's my way of knowing that I obey. Or that I didn't obey. Because there's some people that just want to be the mule. Are you listening to me? I'm just trying to be real. God calls us hard-headed. Come on now. There's some people that say it this way. Donkeys. Okay? Hard-headed. In other words, God has to be continually, continually giving you... Uh, uh, uh. Make it right. Make it right. Do it right. You know? And that's under the judgmental and under God's anger, amen, of justice, amen. Literally, I don't even want to go there, but there was a, 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 a pastora, which is a woman pastor, as she was playing, praying, you know, the grace of God was flowing, was flowing, and then she began to talk about justice. And literally, I felt like a knife was going through the eye of God. An eye. You know, we know. We know. You know what? We all sin. 
And yes, judgment will come upon the land. And many are receiving that even now. They go before the court. You know what? You are guilty as charged. Go in and do your time. And they're paying for it. They're paying for it. But you know what? Thank God that we have a kingship, a lordship that he goes before the, the, the seat, amen, of those who have judged. And, and through the blood of Jesus, through the blood of Jesus, come on now, we have freedom and free, free. In other words, yes, you're guilty. You're guilty as charged for all in what you have done. And literally, it was said this way one time over a family member, amen, a brother in Christ, that when he came into the Lord, um, he was so much in the judgment, uh, uh, judicial system that the judge says, you know what, you've done so wrong that we could put your food on a slingshot and let it go. And as far as that slingshot, that's where you're going to be. Because that's how far you should go. But I'm telling you, prayer. Through prayer. Literally, the judge says, I don't know. I don't know. But you know what? I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. But I tell you what, boy, I don't want to see you back here in this judicial system. And literally, he walked out of, I don't know how many offenses, up to 16, 17, 18 offenses. And God's grace, God's grace was on that. Are you listening to me, church? I'm telling you, God is doing a right thing here today. God is doing a right thing here today. And God is setting people free. Now, I'm going to wrap up with this. There's two couple of things that I want to share on this. Where I'm at. So, so people receive God's promise by having faith. This happens so the promise can be a free gift. It's a free gift. Then all of Abraham's children can have that promise. Why? Because it's a free gift. It is not only for those who live under the law of Moses, but for anyone, anyone, anyone who lives with faith like that of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Now listen to me, church, because I'm wrapping it up. I'm going to give two more statements here of scripture references through the word of God. Read it for yourself. Let the Lord speak to your life. For it is written in the scriptures that I am making you a father of many nations. It is true before God. This is the truth before God our Father. Amen. This is the truth before God. All believers. Amen. The God Abraham believed. The God who gives. Amen. The God who gives, please forgive me, church. We are resuming. We are resuming. Amen. Okay, church, we got cut off there, but we got taken care of it. Amen. But I'm going to put these last two um, messages in. Amen. Because it's so important. It says that as it is written in the scripture that I am making you a father of many nations. This is true before God. The God of Abraham believed. The God who gives life to the dead and who creates something out of nothing. 
So you know what, church? I don't know what you are believing for. But I believe that what you believe and your faith in God, that God will activate this over your life. Amen. I want to see this word go viral in Jesus' mighty name. And I'm going to wrap it up with a couple more since I'm coming in on this, on another intake. Amen. Um, I'm reading there out of the book of Romans there in chapter 5. I'm going to pick it up there on 2. I'm asking you to read Romans chapter 4, going into verse 5. What are you believing and what is your faith based on? Amen. Sin came into the world because of that one man did. And with sin came death. So you can say that sin equals the death. This is why everyone must die because everyone sinned. You know what? Everyone is going to die. Amen. At one place or another within our lives, we are not eternal in these bodies, but we are eternal in the spirit. I just said a word there. We will be eternally in heaven. I'm just trying to be real. Are eternally in hell. I'm just making it real. Amen. There's no middle grounds. Are you listening to me, church? You ain't going to turn into no butterfly. You ain't going to turn into no dog. You're not going to turn into a cat. Amen. No. It's either eternally in the spirit. No longer out of this body. You ain't going to another body. Amen. Eternally into heaven or eternally into hell. This is why everyone must die because everyone sinned. Sin was in the world before the law of Moses. But sin is not counted against us as breaking a commandment when there was no law. In other words, those that sinned, even from the very beginning, there wasn't any laws that were set up. Amen? But as time came upon the life of Moses, amen, God began to use the life of Moses to bring forth what? The written, the written of the law. Amen? And then, of course, we know the Sadducees and the, and the, and the Pharisees begin to add more upon that law. Amen? Uh, you can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do this. You can't do that. And it's just like, okay, then we can't do nothing. Amen? Uh, I believe they added up, I believe, to 298 or 398 more laws upon the law that was given. Amen. So they were just making sure that they obtained this righteousness of holiness. Amen. And um, they're the only ones that could obtain of going in into the holies of holies, which we know that not to be true. We know that the veil was ripped, come on now, through the grace of God, through the blood of Jesus, amen, that we have access to God, amen, to the precious throne of God. We have access now, prayer, worship, amen, and just praise and lifting up God, hallelujah, and that's a whole nother teaching, amen, sticking to the word. That is why everyone must die because everyone has sinned. Sin was in the world before the law of Moses. But sin is not counted against us as breaking a commandment when there was no law. But from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, everyone had to die. What? Everyone had to die. Even those who had not sinned. By breaking a commandment as Adam did. Amen. So it's showing the life of Adam. Because Adam was a portrait. Amen. Of what Jesus. When he came upon the world. It was a portrayal. Amen. But it's saying that everyone had to die. Even those who had not sinned by breaking a commandment. In other words the commandment were not yet given birth. Amen. It says Adam was like the one who was coming in the future. There we go. As God's free gift. It's a free gift. 
Amen. We're not in the religion of the doo-doo gospel. Amen. In other words, I've got to do because even our doo-doo list is as filthy rags before the Lord. Amen. It says the free gift is not like Adam's sin. Many people died because of the sin of that one man. Amen. But the grace, say that with me, but the grace from God was much more greater. And as you see, I love working with my hands. Amen. Much more greater. Many people receive God's, God's what? Free gift of life by the grace of this one man, whom is Jesus Christ. Can we say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Who is the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. After Abraham, excuse me, after Adam sinned once, he was judged guilty. So every time we sin, what? There will be the sin and the sin of guiltiness. Amen. That's the reason why we feel bad. Why? Because now the spirit, when we've come before God, we have that sense of guiltiness or shame. Or you know what? I'm I'm sinful. I'm sinful. We're gonna have that that judgmental spirit, amen. But that's where we can be convicted, amen. Convicted by the Holy Spirit, amen. We know that we sin. We don't need the brother or sister to point out our sin. Hey, we have sin. You know what? We need to pray. We need to pray for our brothers and sisters, for those who have sin. I don't want to have a critical spirit, amen, and be all judgmental, come on now, and saying, you know what, Lord, have grace, have grace upon your people, amen, and we ask the Holy Spirit, we get convicted by the Holy Spirit, which then brings conversion upon our lives, that's the reason why we come before the throne, you know, we ask the Lord for the forgiveness of our sin. To make us right, to make us cleanse, to make us whole, amen. And that what removes our guilt. That's where we feel free now, and we, we're able to thank the Lord. But the gift of God is different. God's gift is free. It it's free. It's a free gift. It came after many, 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 many sins, amen. And it makes people right with God. There's your belief, amen, and there is your faith that mix in the mix, mixture, amen, that makes us right with God and what God's word is saying. That's the reason why when we go to church, when we have these different issues and, and we're, we're not feeling that very good, we're not feeling right, but we get into the, 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 the body of Christ and and the word begins to wash us. It begins to cleanse us. It can be just that one word. And boom. You know what? That that sin and that shame and that guilt. It, it breaks off of your life. That yoke breaks off of your life. Where you feel free. You feel, thank you Lord. You know, I just, I feel good. I feel good. I feel good. I can, I can go on with my life. Amen. I can do what I feel like the Lord has led me to do. Amen. Why? Because God has broken. Amen. That sense of guilt. That sense of, of shame. Amen. And God has come where, we, where he has given us a free gift. Amen. It says one man sinned. And so death ruled all people because of one man. But now. 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 Say now. But now. Now. Those people who accept God's full grace. See, we have to accept what God has given. It's just like this gift. If I'm giving you a gift right now, amen, if I'm giving you a gift, you have to receive it. It's just like this pen. If I have this gift of this pen right here, okay, you know what? You got to take it. Can you get it? Can you get it? Okay, did you get it? 
Praise God. So, if you got the pen, I don't know, I no longer have it. You've received it. You have it. Amen. And that's the way God is saying that we have to accept God's full grace over our life. That's what we believe. And that is our faith. Amen. That the great gift of being made right with Him will surely have its true life. Amen. So, what what a, a revelational word that was given me here today is that when we receive God's full grace, full grace, we have truly received God's true life. Amen. And that's where we have peace within our life and rule through one man. Amen. Through one man, not of sickness, not of disease, not the ruling man of shame, not the ruling man of guilt, of always having a guilty conscience. No. You know what? We have a true life whom is through this one man because he came in as the man in flesh, incarnate, amen, as there in the book of John says, in the flesh, Jesus Christ. So he knows what we're going to walk through. He knows what we're going to go through. He knows all these different situations and scenarios, what's in our mind, what's in our heart, what's happening even upon our bodies. You know what? God has made us right here today. I wrote down sin equals to death. Amen. But the grace of God, grab, grab a hold of this today. When you grab a hold of grace, it will lead you then to what? The true life of Christ. And that looks like a heart. Amen. <laughs> That's the heart of God. Amen. So with that church, I'm going to release you. Amen. Um, I will be receiving calls in today. Amen. If you are needing a prayer of deliverance here today, I want to pray with you here today. Uh, or go into messenger. Amen. You know, we've been on uh, this, uh, uh, I guess... This process right now, uh, praying and fasting, amen. And so, you know what? We are praying and fasting for you. I believe in deliverance over your life. Even through this word of God, get into the first teaching. Get into the first teaching, amen. This is just the cream de la cream, amen, that, that, came, that came in, amen, from some roots of the word of God. I know that God gave me this word today. And I know that it's broken chains off of your life. If it is done so today, I want to hear the victory. Amen. The victory shouts that, you know what? As I receive this word of God, you know what? God did this to me. I want to be able to package these things. Amen. And promote those things through all of our social media. If God has healed you through this ministry. If God has blessed you maybe through a job or a house or a car or a healing upon your body, a healing in your relationship. You know what? I want to hear what God has been doing in your life through you receiving this word of God. And so church, with that, God bless you. Don't forget you are able to make it to the website to make any amount of donation. Or I will be publishing out there the PayPal Me account, amen, that goes directly into the account, amen, that you can be a blessing towards this ministry and uh, in being able to um, to take care of uh, all of our administration level at this point right now. I said, Lord, I released it to you and I'm giving it to you, amen, and that through those who have been receiving this word of God, that they can plant their seeds of faith in this ministry. And if you say, you know what, I haven't been going into any church. And this has been the ministry that I've been listening to. Because we are well as are on our speaker family. Amen. Then I want to see you sowing a seed. Your tithes and your offerings. Amen. Now if you go to church, you already know. You tithe into your church. Amen. And, and your offerings. But if you say, you know what? I prayed about it. And God has led me to give towards this ministry. Amen. We are an e-church 
at this point and at this time, amen, uh, through all our groups, amen, through the Prayer Mountain Church, amen, of all those through Nigeria, and all those that we are in connected to know that God is doing a work. We are still going out, planting those seeds of faith, Sister Tina in the in the, the head front, amen, singing and praising God, and also too leading there in praise and worship, and so know that your seed is planted in good ground here today. Thank you again for your prayers and your support towards this ministry, amen, so that we can continually to reach the world, amen. I'm telling you, there is life, there is grace and true life upon your life today, and I'm going to get that praise report in here today. So church, we love you. Thank you for podcasting with me. And, and I'm going to tell you this, this is just uh, a little uh, uh, more cream of the cream. This is the topper. Amen. Pray in the Holy Spirit. When you say, you know what? I don't know what's going on. I want to, to challenge you to pray in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pray in the Holy Spirit. If you say, you know what? I've never done this speaking in the tongues. You know what? You can message me. We can pray and be in agreement that God will give you this endowment of this power through this wonder working power of the Holy Spirit. We need it. This is the time we need the Holy Spirit. Amen. So be praying in the Spirit. Let God do the work. Amen. He's going to work those things out for you. He's going to open doors. Amen. That no man can open. And he's going to shut those doors. Amen. Because I want only that one door that God will lead us and guide us and hide us and protect us. And you know what? This is to open up the windows of heaven that God can so pour the blessing down upon your life here today. So we love you, church. God bless you. Thank you for all my Facebook family, friends, all those that are connecting me with on the group, the Lions team and club. Amen. And todo ustedes que hablan español, I'm going to try to go back in there. Amen. Hey, look up Julian Biesca. Amen. He is doing our Spanish uh, speaking ministry. And so connect there as well. Amen. On Facebook. Thank you for connecting with me. Tina Viesca. Amen. On different platforms of our social media. Amen. Ministry. And as well, Cruzando Fronteras con una voz de alerta. Until next time, church. God bless you. We love you. Until then. Hey! Yo creo, yo creo